In this video, we'll look at creating a magical Viking rune stone. I find it helpful to design props in context of the world they will live in. So to save time, I grabbed this dark forest background image off of unsplash.com. I'll put a link to it in the description. As always, I start out by creating the silhouette shape of my rune stone and adjust it to my liking. Then I use those silhouettes to create a layer group with the same shape masked out. That way I can drag and drop different layers into each rock shape quickly. Next, I look for photo textures of smooth rocks and give me a good base to work from. I have a vast collection of these types of materials that again, save time and speed up the painting process. I have gone through and tiled several of these textures so that I can easily just grab them and create a pattern for them in Photoshop. I then apply the pattern to my silhouette shape and scale it as needed. Once I'm happy with the texture, I create a new blank layer and then merge the two layers together to rasterize the effect. I make color and value adjustments to get the rock texture to fit better into the environment. I then look for other smooth rock textures that have some character to them. After some more color and value adjustments, I can then use layer masks to blend between the different textures. I use this technique for all sorts of things when creating concept art. And I have included a link in the description if you'd like to get these textures too. Here I am quickly defining the form of my rock shape and some ideas on how it will be lit. I bring in another smooth rock texture that has some lichens to it. I use a random texture brush to mask it into and around my rock for more variety. Now that I have a good base, I start thinking about the design of the runes. In this example, we'll just grab one from an actual rune stone and tweak it as needed. Another little technique that is great for masking out complex black and white designs is to double click the layer and then use these sliders to remove either the black or white values. To soften the transition, split the arrows by using the option key on a Mac and slide it until it looks right. Again, I use a blank layer and merge it with the masked out rune designs to rasterize the effect. Now that I have the rune designs clipped out from the background and rasterized, I can use it to add different layer styles, like a bevel and emboss, to make it feel like it was carved into the stone. I then duplicate it, lock the transparency, and fill it with a blue color that represents the magical glow. To enhance the glow effect, I paint a lighter version of the blue on a new layer. I have this layer set to a color dodge blending mode. As this runestone develops, I keep tweaking the shape, colors, values, and lighting to help it stand out as well as to give it more form. To add even more variety and interest to the rock, I use a spatter type brush and paint in some orange and teal colors. Trying to juggle values, hues, textures, and lighting all at the same time is really hard. So I use tools in Photoshop like the Camera Raw filter to fix and clarify the image. Mm -hmm. 
It becomes apparent that the design of the runes is too complex and gets lost when viewing it from a distance. Now clarity for this type of prop is important, so I decide to remove the glowing lines and fill in the shape instead. I keep zooming in and out, checking to see if it reads better. Finally, I adjust and refine a few things, including color correction and contrast. In all, this concept took one and a half hours to complete. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial and learned something new.